Hey everybody, the Banga's back. Welcome to part 35 of Let's Play Dynasty Warriors 4 Extreme Legends, brought to you by GameAnyone.com. Alright, we should be playing as Dong Zhuo this time. I really hope that's not a pimple on his forehead, because, wow, that looks gross. In 189 AD, after the fall of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, Dong Zhuo, who had been building up his military power in Xilian, received an Imperial Edict to eliminate the Ten Eunuchs. Sensing opportunity, Dong Zhuo began a march to Luoyang. The Ten Eunuchs were a group of corrupt Imperial ministers led by Zhang Rong, who abused the authority bestowed onto them by the Han Emperor with impunity. It was Grand General He Jin, a political enemy of the Ten Eunuchs, who had sent forth the Edict demanding their removal. The time had finally come. As he entered the capital with his massive army, Dong Zhuo immediately eliminated three of the Ten Eunuchs. Only seven more to deal with before Dong Zhuo can effectively seize power over the Han court. And there are no restrictions this time. Just beat the balls out of these enemies. Well, actually, they don't have balls because they're eunuchs. Yeah, they... The eunuchs are... They castrate themselves just to get influence under the Han court. Like, some actually voluntarily did so just for the sake of, you know getting some power, getting influence, and some were quite self-serving. The level 11 weapon is Pandemonium, also known as the Final Dungeon of Final Fantasy 2. Not the SNES Final Fantasy 2, that's 4. This gives him a level 17 Tiger Amulet, level 14 Wing Boots, level 20 Horned Helm, and level 16 Cavalry Armor. Well, it's no surprise he gets mostly items that are fitting on horseback, because Shi Liang does have its share of Cavalry Warriors. That being said, however, I'll be giving Dong Zhuo no longer the Tiger Amulet. Speed Scroll is valuable because he's not fast at all. An Elixir would be very good for this, though. So I think that's what I'm going to give him. Uh, red Hair would not be a good idea, considering I would be hit a lot. I'll just go back to Shadow Harness, bring in my bodyguards, and the objectives are as follows. If the carriage is destroyed, which is where the Emperor is to, or if it escapes, you lose. You have to defeat Zhang Rong. So, let's get going. The best way to get to him is slay the other eunuchs. This is an Imperial Decree! The ten eunuchs must die! Alright, so let's begin with Jian Shou. Now, these eunuchs will actually will try to get away from you. So, luckily I got the speed scroll and the wind scroll here. to help out. If you're looking to build your defense, this is a good level to do so, because the eunuchs drop shields only. If you're doing this in hard mode, you'll be getting like level 4 shields, or shields that increase your defense by 4. Uh, Dong Zhou, you killed 2. Some of them are probably false eunuchs, I don't know. Maybe they all were actual eunuchs. It's hard to tell. Funny thing is, you got like eight targets to kill, but the game says that you killed three already, and seven more to go, yet there's eight. Maybe one of them is a fake, who knows? I'm pretty sure you'll just find out more about it on either Wikipedia, other Chinese history websites, or even the encyclopedia found here. The thing I like about the Dynasty Warriors games is that they give you an encyclopedia so you can actually learn about the Three Kingdoms outside of the game, but rather just like learn the terms, learn about the historical events, the historical places, etc, etc. I like these games so you can actually learn something. Assassin's Creed was another game that did that for me. I mean, it doesn't have to be fully educational, like a Mario's Time Machine. You know, games like that. You won't break Give me some, a little bit of an educational Another experience insect. while making it still action-packed. Dynasty Warriors and Assassin's Creed did that for me. The traitors approach, Your Highness. We must hurry to the carriage. Alright, so by slaying these eunuchs, we should be able to get through. Open the gate! If you didn't kill him, this gate would not open. Right, now I gotta deal with Yuan Shao's forces. 
Getting Dong Zhuo's weapon was a pain in the ass because, well, you have to slay the eunuchs. You also gotta get 100 KOs. Not to mention, you obviously have to defeat Yuan Shao to get through. And he's pretty difficult because he's in hyper mode, Yan Liang and Yuan Shao are in hyper mode, the enemy soldiers themselves are stronger than the other enemy soldiers who fought outside of Yuan Shao's forces. Not to mention, if you were too slow and the carriage escapes, you'll lose. So you had to be quick in doing all of this. If you were to defeat Yuan Shao before the carriage begins its escape, you can unlock Storm Harness, which is that harness that allows you to increase your attack power when on horseback. And I just got it. Luckily for the weapon, you don't have to defeat Yan Liang and Wen Chou. Alright, let's move on. Zhang Rang and the carriage have been found. Open the gate! Okay, remember the objective. You lose if the carriage is destroyed. And remember, you can destroy the carriage. So in other words, friendly fire is pretty much not going to help you. The carriage counts as an enemy, meaning you can destroy it. So make sure you focus your attacks away from the carriage. Worst case scenario, Zhang Rong goes towards the carriage, or the carriage goes towards you! So I can't engage him yet? Okay, now I can. Dong Zhuo is not really the best for like doing lots of damage with a Muso, because the first strike does a pop-up, and I don't like that. Can be cruel. There we go, now I secure the carriage. Why are you so frightened? Because well, you're ugly! From this day forward, I will protect the Emperor! Now get moving! This is our victory march! I wonder if they actually ran over that guy that was just like right between the gate and the carriage. That would have been pretty funny to see. Well, not funny for that guy, but still. Alright, speaking of Pandemonium, that reminds me of that PC demo or PlayStation 1 game that I played called Pandemonium. It was like a 2.5D platformer. It was alright, I guess. So, enjoy the ending. Born in Lin Tiao in the Longxi region, a fearsome warrior who made a name for himself by repelling barbarian invasions from the north. When the Yellow Turban Rebellion began, he led his army from Liang to join the subjugation force. Dong Zhuo had hoped to use this opportunity to gain more influence. But his army was defeated and he returned to Liang in shame. Dong Zhuo's time was to come after the rebellion. At the time, the Imperial Court was consumed in a bitter rivalry between Grand General He Jin and the Ten Eunuchs. Eventually, He Jin sent out an Imperial Decree demanding their removal. Dong Zhuo once again led his army to Luoyang and eliminated the corrupt ministers, one after the other. And with the death of its leader, Zhang Rong, the Ten Eunuchs were no more. After saving the Emperor from Zhang Rong, Dong Zhuo entered Luoyang in triumph. Soon after, he gained enormous influence over the imperial court, and began a rule of tyranny. After moving the capital to Chang'an, Dong Zhuo sought to usurp the imperial mandate from the Han Emperor, but he was betrayed by Lu Bu and killed. A fitting end, perhaps, for a villain. Look at that portrait there, it looks like Dong Zhuo saying, hey, hey man, you got any money or anything? For my face? Alright, so let's stop the video right here. In the next episode, we're going to go from a corrupt ruler to a benevolent ruler, Yu Bay of Shu. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching.